Hi guys, my name is Majid and in today's video I'm going to be doing a comparison of the Apple iPad Air 2 that's gone through a small change and comparing it with the Samsung Tab S that's been in the market for quite a while but still stands up pretty well to the iPad. Now one of the biggest changes on the iPad has been the fingerprint scanner. As you can see, it works really nicely, but that's something that the Tab already had, so it does compare pretty nicely on that. And they both have their own way of working. Samsung's more of a slide scanner. Anyways, uh, moving aside, uh, taking a look at the front of the screens, starting with the Samsung, it has a 10.5 inch Super AMOLED capacitive touch screen with a resolution of 2560 by 1600 which gives it a ppi of 288 uh, it's actually a very very sharp crisp and clear screen with really vibrant colors uh, moving on to the ipad it has a 9.7 inch ips display with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 also giving it a ppi of 264. now internally we're looking at two very powerful devices the samsung being an octa-core uh, because it has two quad-core processors one is a 1.9 gigahertz cortex a15 and the second one being a 1.3 gigahertz cortex a7 combining that with three gigabytes of RAM and an Adreno 330 uh, GPU, it's gonna give you blazing fast performance and really good graphics for gaming. Now on the iPad, it has an A8X, which is Apple's brand new uh, processor, most powerful processors that they've ever put in to a tablet. It's clocked at 1.5 gigahertz and it has three cores, so it's a triple core processor. Uh, also, it has a M8 motion coprocessor running uh, alongside it to help it do all the fitness activities and constantly read data that you're gonna be using with your iPad uh, services that are going on in the back. Now, combining that with two gigabytes of RAM, it's gonna give you flawless performance and basically super, super smooth transitions from one thing to another. Now putting these two processors head to head, we did a Geekbench and uh, it's kind of staggering how much better the iPad does. It's almost got double the score, even though it only has a triple core processor compared to the Samsung having an eight core dual quad core processors inside. Uh, so as you can tell, it's most likely the iOS is really utilizing that three core processor and just giving you overall better performance. Now, one of the most unique things about both of these tablets is the fact that at one point uh, they were and are the thinnest tablets in the world. So the Samsung Tab S had the previous record, which was broken by the iPad Air 2, coming in at 6.1 millimeters, which is only 0.5 millimeters thinner than the Tab S. But uh, I guess Apple just wanted to have the thinnest, lightest tablet and they achieved that. Taking a look at the front of the tablets, they both have front-facing cameras. The Samsung has a 2.1 megapixel front-facing camera that can record at 1080p, whereas the iPad has a 1.2 megapixel camera that can record at 720p. Now, this is some footage that I recorded uh, pretty much just to show you guys what it looks like. As you can see, the iPad has a bit of a warmer color temperature so you can see it's a lot more uh, yellowy whereas the Samsung Tab S is a lot more neutral and uh, accurate to what it would be in real life. Also uh, the Samsung has a wider zoom so you can see more detail in the shot plus it's a little bit sharper because it's 1080p. Now in terms of the back camera they both have 8 megapixel cameras that do a very good job in terms of recording. At the end of the day it comes down to the user for their preference and how they like their color temperatures. I can tell you right now that the front issue that I was having continues onto the back with the iPad Air having a warmer color temperature and the Samsung Tab being neutral to real life. Uh, taking a look at it though, the one thing you'll notice right away is the stability. Uh, it's software based stabilization that's in both these devices and the iPad Air does a lot better job in terms of keeping the image straight. Uh, there's a lot less shakiness going on so you can tell that whatever they're doing in the software is definitely working because the iPad Air 2's image looks a lot better when it comes to stabilization. So the last test I did was inside the house in a low light situation, taking the rear cameras into effect. Uh, the light is on, so as you can see, it does have a bit of a yellowish hue that's from the light bulbs. Uh, and overall, both the videos don't actually look very good. They all have a lot of grain going on, but um, in the end, there's not one 
actual winner i'd say like they're both on par but you guys can make up your mind on which one you think does look better uh, as you can see they're pretty similar now without going too much into the software side of the comparison i did have to uh, mention a few things especially about the samsung tab s there are some things in the software that make it quite nice for the user give them a lot of uh, extra option in terms of what they want to do with the device. Uh, first being the multiple window multitasking. It allows you to bring up uh, two different applications side by side and you can work on them simultaneously, uh, which is definitely really nice, especially because of the fact that it has a big enough screen that you can utilize this feature very nicely. Now, the second being the uh, task manager and how it actually manages the apps being run in the background uh, with the Samsung Tab S it, when you press the tab manager button it opens up all your open applications you can either close them one by one or close all which just makes it really convenient if you want to uh, get access to a lot of the RAM or whatever free up some of the processing power now in terms of iOS this is definitely a downside saying that we're in 8.1 and they still haven't brought out a feature that can close all your apps at once so that's definitely something worth noting although it is a very tiny thing and doesn't impact performance too much um, moving on from there the next thing is the web browsing capabilities now in terms of the Samsung tab it lets you download any browser you want but the web browsing experience is definitely not as fluid as it is on the iPad Air 2 with Chrome being a little more laggy now this could be because of the fact that uh, Chrome is you know not as, as fluid of a browser as the iPad Safari browser but I don't think that's something that they can say they should get on that and fix it so it's not so laggy as you can see from uh, my demo right here, the Safari is doing a lot better job scrolling up and down, it's just a lot more fluid. Now another thing to mention with the Tab S, it does have external expandability for memory size. Uh, that being said, it does only ship with 16 and 32 gigabyte internal memory. So that's one of the reasons that they're giving you this option. So if you have a, a micro SD card slot, you can put it in there. I'm sure it's something to do with cost savings, but definitely a plus because Apple does not offer any external memory. Now, taking a look at the screen itself, we haven't really seen too much of a difference or improvement in Apple screens for a very long time. Uh, in this version though, however, we do see a difference in technology used to produce it. Uh, there used to be an air gap in the middle between the digitizer and the screen, uh, but now there isn't. So it almost feels like you're touching the pixels and uh, it does feel very, very nice. Also, this is the reason why the iPad is so thin. It just gives it that extra room. Uh, in terms of the Samsung 10.5 inch screen, it is very, very, very nice. It's extremely vibrant and the colors really do pop. The black levels, they are really good. And you can see like in terms of low light, when you turn all your surrounding room light off, it really shines um, and just the overall experience of looking at the display is absolutely amazing. I would say even better than the iPad Air 2. Watching movies definitely does help on the Samsung. As you can see, uh, the black levels are extremely dark. Now I'm in a scenario where there's a lot of light, so it doesn't do the screen justice. It doesn't show you exactly how dark it is. But if you were to take the screen and you know turn off all the lights, you'll pretty much only see the parts that are being lit up. Now the Apple iPad's display also does a very good job, but I think it does a better job in terms of lit situation. So if you're uh, in a daylight environment or if you're just in a room lit by your house lights, uh, it'll do really good and it'll actually look a lot more vibrant uh, in terms of watching movies or whatever you're doing. But when it comes down to turning all the lights off and just using the device in its own light, uh, you can definitely see that the edge light does bleed through and it's not as black as Samsung. So definitely a downside for uh, Apple on this feature, but uh, again, for most 90% of the use, it does look absolutely amazing. Now the next biggest thing in terms of using a device is sound. So if you have an iPad or a Samsung tablet, one of the biggest things is how does it sound in terms of uh, movies, videos, little whatever you're doing with it. Um, and here is a little speaker test. You can decide for yourself on what you like uh, more. I would definitely say the iPad Air 2 kicks the Samsung's ass and it's completely out of the water.
Now, taking a look at both tablets in terms of gaming, of course, the iPad 2 is king in this area. It has access to millions of applications in the App Store, not to say that the Android App Store is lagging behind, but um, it does have a very nice processor, the A8X, which does deliver a lot of graphics power. You can play any game that you want, pretty much uh, no limitations and you'll have a very very smooth experience uh, whereas the Samsung also does a really good job but I think the iPad Air 2 definitely wins in the gaming round everything just looks really really sharp crisp and just very very smooth overall and that's what you want all right guys so thanks for watching this video I hope you liked it it's more based on the tech side of both these devices now it could go on in terms of the software features but there's way too many to compare and a lot of it actually depends on the personal experience of the user and what they find beneficial for what they're using the device for um, so if you did want to check out the full specs of each device I'm gonna link two links down below one for each and you can have an in-depth look because there's a lot of stuff that I skipped over just looked at the main things also, if you're interested in more videos and comparisons, check out our channel um, and subscribe. If you haven't, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.